Psalms 119 verses 129 to 136. Pay. Communion in the word. Fellowship in the word. Thy testimonies are wonderful. Everything that God has done is wonderful. From creation to what he's done for the nation of Israel were the mighty acts uh, given to married couples of a great age a child. I mean, from Genesis to Psalm 119 of everything that's wonderful that God has done. Takes up a, a big body, huge body, a, a sea, and divides it open so somebody can go on dry land. Tears down a complete city just by marching around and shouting. Defeats an army with just a, a candle and a, and a ram's horn. Therefore does my soul keep them. Not the body, not the spirit, but the soul, that eternal part of you. You're to keep the testimonies, your testimonies, what God has done for you. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. You ought to have your own testimony. You ought to have your own greatness that God has done just for you and only you. And with Psalm 119, 105, the entrance of thy words giveth light. So if you want... To start your day, the first day of your life, which is every day you live. Because when you wake up, you're starting a, a brand new life. Tomorrow's not here. Yesterday's gone. What you've done wrong should be under the blood. What you've done right, a new day, you should be able to do more. Is the word is to be in the word to study the word to read the word it giveth understanding unto the simple a simple person according to Proverbs will get saved a fool will not a scorner will not a prideful proud person will not a person that doesn't have his head full of ideas who does not want to acknowledge God who's hey I, I'll keep myself open for God and gets in the word he'll know more than any educated man I open my mouth and panted thirsting thirsting the Bible speaks of the word as you're to, you're to want it as food. You're to want it as water, as honey, as bread. For I long for thy commandments. You want, you're eager for the word of God. Look thou upon me. God, look upon me. Be merciful unto me. Asking for God to be merciful, be mercy. As thou usest to do unto those that love thy name. Lord, you treat other people that love you with mercy. Lord, please treat me the same. Order my steps in thy word. And we read about that in Psalm 105. The path. Give me an order. Tell me where to put my feet. Is the most safest prayer you can have in your life if you obey the steps that God give you. You won't go wrong with that. Let not iniquity have dominion over me. Lord, if you tell me where to walk, and I won't slay off. I won't exit. I won't choose a path that you don't want me. If I keep walking a way that you want me, your will for me to do and walk, that will keep me from iniquity. 
But too often we don't follow the steps that the Lord has for us. Then we fail in sin. Deliver me from the oppression of man. It's a heartache to have people give you a hard time. It's sometimes may one have you to quit. It works on you. And not for good. So will I keep thy precepts. The oppression of man keeps you from the word. It keeps you in communion. Because you've got to be on guard for them, which you should be for the word. Now the two words that follow in 33 and 34 is, is American words. Let me order in 33 and let it be delivered in 34. Look how the word of God is. You go up to a place, you, you have an order, then you want it delivered. You never deliver anything that you haven't ordered. You order something on the internet and guess what? It gets delivered to you. And God gives us orders in, for us. And how many times do we deliver for him? The model of the post office, we deliver for you. But do we deliver for God? How many packages has God not got from us that he orders? And yet, if we were to order a pizza, and an hour later the pizza hasn't come to our door, we're going to be calling and complaining. And if it don't come within another hour, we're going to call them up and say, hey, listen, cancel my order. We're going to find another pizza place. And that's what God will have to do with sometimes the things in our life, especially when you deal with the soul of a man. When God orders you to go to a particular person, and you don't show up. Eventually, God's going to call you up and say, okay, fine. I'm not going to use you. I'll have to get somebody else. When God orders our steps, we ought to deliver for him. Think about the next time when you make an order. While you're sitting there waiting. Say, Lord, what orders are you waiting on for me? Make thy face, God's face, to shine upon thy servant. Okay? You ordered something. It's delivered. And that, that, that surprise on your face, that, that wonderful, it's here. I woke up this afternoon, there's a box on the table, I was like, oh, what is that? Open it, oh, it's Rachel's school books, they're the ones I ordered, they're here. Did we make God's face shine? Ah, he finally, he did it. He finally come. And teach me thy statutes. Notice that word teach keeps showing up in the longest chapter in the, in the Bible. And it's all about the word. And there are Americans that run to these colleges and these cemeteries or seminaries, whatever you want to call them, for the men to teach them. They don't seek God. And they come out just as stupid. How does somebody go to a Bible college with a King James Bible come out putting down the King James Bible. How does a preacher in a pulpit uh, take the word of God and changes it and misuses it? 
because he's going to a man to teach him. Your flesh is against the word. There are times when I'm reading the Bible, the Bible is being read to me. It's like, it's like, shut up, flesh. I'll be in church and my flesh be like, hey, don't do well. Shut up, flesh. Listen to a, a preaching in the car. You're going on the road and shut up, flesh. And we preach about telling the flesh to shut up and put the flesh in the ground, bury it. It's not happy. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is not. And the flesh wants to go do pleasure. And then you go to a man to teach you the Bible. What? And Jesus said, and I believe it's John 14. I could be wrong about that. The Holy Spirit is the one to be the teacher. You know why America has failed Bible? Because they run to these schools for man to teach you and not God. You know who's supposed to teach somebody and get them ready for the ministry according to Paul? Look at Timothy. Paul taught Timothy. He never sent Timothy to a seminary. You know who taught Paul in his school? Uh, he went to Arabia, I believe it is. And God taught him. Some people won't even go to a church unless they see the papers of the pastor. Why? I went to this big name school. Yeah, and changed the Bible and corruption and everything else like that. I've seen three people come out of three, well, two big name schools and one kind of, I didn't, well, I heard of it, but then pastor's kids there and other kids went there and they come out and it's not the Holy Spirit doing the teaching you don't need to be in a Bible school you don't need to be have paper names and titles after your name you can just be that simple person open up the Bible and let God speak to you rivers of waters Run down my eyes. It's just not it's just not a tear that goes down your cheek. An onion can do that. It's when tears after tears after tears after tears. For what? Because they keep not thy law. The writer of this psalm, of this area here, he's looking around and he sees the complete sinless, I mean, excuse me, he sees the complete sinning of God's people, the Jews. How callous they are. And they may be going to the temple and they look at it like they're not going with a full heart. Or the three times a year that they were to go to the temple, he packs up his family and, and ready to go. And he looks over at his neighbors and they're just there. And or the commandments being broken. Maybe people down the street are, are just took their children to Molech. And his reaction to it is tears. I wonder how many Christians shed tears. Of those that are not obeying what God tells them to do. When God says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and they pass on by, they mock, they ridicule, they laugh, or they just don't even, don't even care, act like they don't even hear you, or they're so busy, whatever it is in their life, that they don't hear you. And you look at them, at, can't you see what we're warning you? And if you're not saddened, do I weep? I'm sorry to say, not rivers or waters. I get choked up. Well, some I have. To realize that God is right. To step out by faith and to deal with somebody who won't. And they're in. That's a shame. Now, I could be in a religion and bring people in because look at my numbers or to build up the number of whatever the denomination they are in. But that's not because of what God says. Jesus said you can go out there and get, get one man, an apostolate, and you can make him twofold worse. And that wasn't because of what God said. And I look at people, and there's just some people out there that's like, what is your trouble? What is your problem? And then I'm, I was telling one of the brothers last night, then I'm called to remember, for God so loved the world. I think one of the songs growing up, uh, one of the groups, all we need is love. Yeah, God provides it for you. And at my job, certain times I wear my ear, my earphones, and other times I don't, depending if I'm going to be called or not. But and I listen to the music. And I'm not supposed to, and I hate the music that it's overhead and play. And I can't believe all the songs that are played throughout the night about breaking up. You have left me. And there's a couple of them that are sung over and over about, hey, I, I've got two men in my life. But the true love that God has given to men and rejecting it and knowing the penalties that they're going to get ought to make you weak. And that will make you a more stronger, earnest, zealous soul winner. And I guess one of my prayers for me is to be more like that. To realize more where they're, at, where they're going and to shed more tears for them. Now, where is the communion? Where is the communion of the word through these eight verses?
is living what the word tells you to do. Living the word will make God's face shine upon you because you are doing what he wants you to do or you have delivered to him what he ordered. And that pleases God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in the Gospel of John, if you love him, you'll keep his commandments. And if you, if you love the brethren, the love of Jesus is in you. And if you read the verse, it says, if you don't love the brethren, then Christ is not going to love you. And then there would be no communion. The order that God has for today is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you're to love the brethren. Those are the two commandments that John the Apostle tells us. Jesus said, love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And to love your neighbor as yourself. All right, if you love God, you're going to do what he orders. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you're going to cry over him. You're going to weep with those that weep. You're going to rejoice with those that rejoice, Paul says. And when you do that, you got communion in the Word. Oh, Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow. In number